Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. Now this is a very, very, very small video and kind of like a silly video so because I think most of you already know this stuff, but I guess maybe there is like one or two percent of people that don't know this and maybe they can uh, get some information uh, out of this video. Now, this video is about creating custom initializers in Swift when you're using a structure. So right now we have a structure, which is a rectangle, and you're passing in the width and you're passing in the height, which is perfectly fine. Now, one of the things that you may not realize is that whenever you're using a structure, uh, when you create an instance of that structure, automatically it will create an initializer for you. So you can see that there is an initializer which takes in the width and which takes in the height. It's already created for you. That's the cool thing about a structure. Now, if I go over here and if I go ahead and create a structure or sorry, initializer inside the structure, and I would simply say that I'm just gonna take a width, which I mean, this is a completely silly example, okay? And whatever width you pass in, I'm just gonna go ahead and set that width and I'm gonna go ahead and set that width to the uh, height also. In other words, that particular rectangle kind of end up being a square, all right? Now, if I go over here and try to create an instance of that rectangle, you will see that the custom, the default initializer that we created, which was taking in two arguments, the width and height is gone. And now it is replaced by your custom initializer that you just created, which is this one. So, well, how do we get it back? I mean, the one with the width and the height, which was taking in, uh, we, we do need that. I mean, if I go ahead and comment this one out, and now if I go ahead and check it out, you can see it's come back. Now we can pass in width and height. But I want both. I want the one that takes in the width and height, and I also want a custom initializer which only takes in the width. So how do I do that? Well, the way that you will do that is you will create an extension on the rectangle or any other structure that you have. And then inside the extension, you can go ahead and create a custom initializer. And now we can go ahead and say width equals to width, and we can say self.height equals to height. It's kind of like a very silly example. But now I can go ahead and create a rectangle. And now you will see that we have both the initializer, the default initializer, which takes in the width and height, which is based on the actual implementation of the structure, the definition of structure, and our own custom initializer, which is uh, created inside the extension, which only takes the width. And I can pass in any width I want, and obviously this will be applied to the height also, so that particular rectangle would turn out to be a square, all right? So if you do want to create custom initializers and don't want to get rid of the default initializer whenever you're using a structure, then you can extend or create an extension on that structure and put the initializer inside that structure. So that's pretty much it. Hope you like this small video. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. This is actually the course that just got released literally 10 minutes ago. It was literally published 10 minutes ago, all right? It's called Testing iOS App Behavior-Driven Development Using Swift. This is all about testing all about behavior-driven development when you are writing your iOS uh, apps. Now, this is a great course. This is around 7.5 to 8 hour course, as you can see, and it covers a lot about testing and text expectations and dependency injections and mocking. Uh, it's usually it's revolving around the whole concept of behavior-driven development and how behavior-driven development can allow you to create much better software. If you are interested in getting this course, then check out the YouTube description. The actual link to the coupon is right there in the YouTube description. And while you're there, check out my other courses, which are also linked in the YouTube description. Thank you so much, and I really hope that you enjoy the video.